Good morrow, one and all. I'm Mr. King, and in today's video, we'll be looking at the poem Colonization in Reverse. Now, this poem by Louise Bennett is a dramatic monologue which responds to the mass migration of people from Jamaica to England after the Second World War. Now, I want to begin with a confession. When I first read this poem, I underestimated the depth and power of this poem. This is actually the second time I've made this video because I discovered so much when I made the first recording that I decided to start again so I could share all the things that I noticed. Now this poem is challenging, not only because it is written in Jamaican patois, which might be unfamiliar, more on that in a moment, but because it interweaves a lot of challenging themes. I actually think that this poem, like There's a Certain Slant of Light, resists a single straightforward interpretation. I actually think there are at least four different ways you could interpret this poem. Now, I don't claim that these are the only ways. There are almost certainly more. But I'd like to present these four interpretations to you so that you can decide which you think is the most important. But I'm getting ahead of myself just a little bit. Let's talk about the plan for this video. We'll begin by talking about some key context that's helpful to understand when approaching this poem. We'll talk about colonisation, Jamaica's history of colonisation, and what Jamaican patois is. Next, we've got a reading of the poem from my colleague, Miss Wallace, and we'll also check that we understand what's going on in the poem. Afterwards, I'll present to you the four possible interpretations of the poem, and we'll end by going through the poem one final time and pick out some language and structural techniques that you might want to comment upon if you're writing about this in an exam. As always, if you want to skip ahead to the parts you think you'll find most useful, please do that, and I'll try and put timestamps in the description below. So let's start with some key context and begin with that first word in the title, colonisation. What is that? Colonisation is the process of colonising or taking control of another people group or land. So, for example, when the British Empire started taking control of other countries in the 1500s onwards, that was an example of colonisation. So in the British Empire, Britain imposed its will onto other countries, including Jamaica. It made laws, took away people's freedoms, rights, lands, resources and in extreme cases used violence and even took away people's lives to enforce its will. Now, I cannot understate enough how horrific colonisation was for huge numbers of people throughout history. And today's poem was written in response to the end of colonisation in Jamaica. So as I've mentioned, Britain colonised Jamaica from 1655, and generally that is regarded as a really oppressive historical act. Now I could make a whole video on this, but just to give the quickest of overviews, Jamaica was part of the British Empire, it had uh, its rights and freedoms and resources taken away, um, Jamaica was treated really awfully, and perhaps one very prominent and particularly awful example of this is during the transatlantic slave trade, Jamaica was treated as a slave colony. Nearly a million people were forcibly captured from Western Africa, taken to Jamaica in absolutely abhorrent conditions and were forced to work as slaves to produce resources to make the British Empire richer. But after 250 years of rebellion and resistance, freedom from slavery was won in 1838. And over the next 100 years or so, Jamaica was moving towards independence, which it achieved in 1962. Now, really importantly, after the end of the Second World War, many Jamaicans were encouraged to migrate back to England. In fact, nearly 15,000 people did to help rebuild the country after the devastation of the Second World War. And an example of this is the Windrush generation. These are the first group of migrants who came from the Caribbean to England, having been invited to do so, to settle, to live and to work. Now, today's poet, Louise Bennett, calls that mass migration of people from Jamaica back to England, colonisation in reverse. But is it? 
because when the British Empire colonised Jamaica, people from Britain travelled to Jamaica uninvited and they imposed their laws, their rules uh, on Jamaica, they violated Jamaican people's freedoms and rights and it was generally regarded as an incredibly oppressive and brutal process. But when people from Jamaica started travelling to Britain in after the Second World War, they were invited to do so. And people came and settled peacefully and, and they worked and they contributed and they, they made a difference. So this phrase, colonisation in reverse, is heavily ironic because there is no way that the peaceful migration of people from Jamaica to Britain could be considered colonisation in reverse. It is in no way equivalent to historical colonisation. And that's a really helpful introduction to this poem, because this poem will problematise and question what the experience was like for people travelling from Jamaica to Britain. So before we look at the poem itself, let me just say a few final introductory words. This poem was written by Louise Bennett, who was born in Jamaica, studied in London, and was often affectionately known as Miss Lou. And Bennett is famous for writing her poems and texts in a version of Jamaican patois, which I'll say more about in a second. But first, Bennett was famous, or had a reputation, for touching on the truth of what society was like through language and specifically through using Jamaican patois. So what is Jamaican patois? Patois is an English-based Creole language with lots of influences from around the world. It's very colourful and very energetic, very musical. And in the 1960s, when Jamaica was negotiating its independence, using patois was frowned upon. But now it's used as a symbol of pride and was particularly promoted through reggae music, such as the music of Bob Marley. And Louise Bennett uses it as an unapologetic statement of pride in, in her Jamaican identity. And in this poem, which explores what it was like for people to move from Jamaica to Britain, the use of patois is a statement that they are bringing their identity with them as they come to Britain. So, now we've looked at some key context to understand this poem, let's look at the poem itself. We're going to hear a reading from my colleague Miss Wallace, and afterwards we'll go through it another time and check that we understand what's going on in it. Colonisation in Reverse by Louise Bennett Scovely What a joyful news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going bust. Jamaica people colonizing England in reverse. By the hundred, by the thousand, from country and from town, by the shipload, by the plane load, Jamaica is England bound. Them are poor out of Jamaica. Everybody's future plan is to get a big time job and settle in the motherland. What an island, what a people, man and woman. Old and young, just a pack them bag and baggage and turn history upside down. Some people don't like travel, but for sure them loyalty. Them all are open up cheap fare to England agency. And week by week them shipping off, them countrymen like fire. For immigrate and populate the seat of the empire. <laughs> Una see your life is funny. Una see the ton about. Jamaica live for box bread out of English people mouth. For when them catch a England and start play them different role. Some we settle down for the walk and some we settle for the door. <laughs> Jane said they don't too bad because them pay and she two pound a week for seek a job. That suit her dignity. <laughs> Mr. Jane will never find work at the rate of she a look. For all the she depa and fan coach, a real love story book. What a debment of England. Them face war and brave the worst. But me wondering how them going stand. Colonization in reverse. Ay ay ay.
Thank you very much, Miss Wallace. So let's go through the poem now and just check that we understand what's going on in it. And if you're struggling or unfamiliar with the Jamaican Patois, hopefully this will be some help to you. So we begin this poem with the narrator talking to their friend, Miss Matty, and they begin by saying, what a joyful news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart wind burst or I feel like my heart is going to burst. So the narrator begins by saying there's joyful news and their heart is going to burst. Uh, is that with, with happiness, with joy? Um, why is that? Is that because of the end of colonisation? Is it because of these new opportunities? Or is it said a bit ironically? You know, Is her heart actually going to burst? Um, is she possibly a bit scathing, a bit sceptical of everything that is to come? And then we have this idea of Jamaican people colonising England in reverse. So this movement of people from Jamaica to England um, is what the poet calls colonisation in reverse. In the next stanza, by the hundred, by the thousand, from country and from town, by the shipload, by the plane load, Jamaica is England bound. So in this stanza, people are coming to England by the hundreds, by the thousands, from the country, from towns, by ships, by plane. So there's a lot of enthusiasm for coming to England. Dem a pour out a Jamaica. So people are pouring out from Jamaica. And everybody's future plan is fit, is to get a big time job and settle in the motherland. So the motherland, um, this is a really interesting phrase, which I want to talk about more later. But the motherland is what England was referred to in the British Empire. But there is a question of whether England was a mother to Jamaica, given how horribly England treated Jamaica during the period of historical colonisation. More on that later. What a island, what a people, man and woman, old and young, just pack them bag and baggage and turn history upside down. So people are so excited, they're packing their bags, they're packing their baggage and they're turning history upside down because people from Jamaica are moving to England. They're reversing history, arguably, although, as we'll talk about later, is it so simple? It seems simple in the stanza. But is it so simple to address the historical legacy of colonisation? Some people don't like travel. They don't want to travel. But to show their loyalty, they've opened up cheap fares so that other people can get to England. So even those who don't want to travel themselves are helping others go to England. And week by week, them shipping off, them countrymen like fire. So people are travelling uh, like a fire. We'll talk about that more later. They immigrate and populate, to immigrate and populate the seat of the empire, to, to immigrate to England. Uno see how life is funny. Uno see the turnabout. Do you see how life is funny? Do you see the turnaround? Do you see how things have changed you know, Jamaica used to be colonised by the British Empire and now it's just so different. Jamaican people are now taking bread out of English people's mouths. So this is a bit ironic here and it's not entirely fair. Um, Jamaican people were invited to England to, to work, to contribute. Um, but here the, the poet is sort of saying with a a bit of a joke, a bit of tongue in cheek. Oh, look how things have changed. People from England used to go to Jamaica and take our resources. And now we're going to England and actually we're taking some, some resources, but we're, they're also contributing at the same time. For when them catch at England, for when they get to England and they start to play a different role, some will settle down to work, but others will settle down for the doll. So the doll is unemployment benefits. So some people uh, wouldn't be able to find work and so they would uh, get money from the government um, while they're looking for a job. And an example of this is Jane. Uh, Jane says the doll is not too bad uh, because they paying she, they're paying her £2 a week to seek a job, £2 a week to find a job that suits her dignity. Me say Jane will never find work at the rate how she'd a look. So the narrator doesn't think that Jane's going to find work given how she's looking because all day she's on Aunt Fan's couch reading love stories. And then we come to uh, this final stanza where the tone seems to be very different um, to everything else we've seen before. What a devilment at England. You know, I've, I've kind of paraphrased that as goodness me England. But we can talk about the tone of that exclamative later. 
They faced war and braved worse. So England has faced war and braved worse, but I'm wondering how they're going to cope with this colonisation in reverse, ending in a very ominous tone. How will England cope with this mass migration of people from Jamaica to England? So now we've looked at key context and we've read through the poem and checked for understanding, I now want to present to you four possible ways we can interpret this poem. And for each interpretation, I've picked out a couple of quotes just to illustrate what I mean. So the first possible interpretation of this poem is that it is a celebration of the end of colonisation. And the poet celebrates this by talking really excitedly about how history has changed. And that's what the poem refers to in its very title, Colonisation in Reverse. There seems to be a reversal of fortune. Jamaica used to be colonised by the British Empire, but now people are peacefully and freely going back to England to live, to settle, to work there. And she calls this a turnabout. She says it's it's funny. And she says that it's turning history upside down. And this is done in a really positive, cheerful tone. It's celebrating the end of colonisation. There's a slight mocking tone here uh, when she talks about colonisation in reverse. Because what people from Jamaica are doing by freely travelling to England is in no way the same as when Britain uh, took control of Jamaica in the British Empire. But she has fun with this idea. She says, oh, well, you know, Jamaica live for box bread out of English people's mouths. So people from Jamaica are taking bread from English people's mouths. And she gives the example of Jane, who's on the dole, who's getting two pounds a month from the government. It's almost like she's saying, look how things have changed. England used to oppress Jamaica, but now, well, Jane's taking two pounds from the government and some people from Jamaica are taking some resources from England, almost as if those are the two same things, so equivalent, which of course they're not. And so this sort of joking comparison um, makes the current migration seem like actually quite a positive thing uh, and it makes historical colonisation seem pretty awful. And this leads, naturally, to a second possible interpretation, that this poem is a criticism of historical colonisation. So whereas the previous interpretation was a celebration of the end of colonisation and perhaps some optimism looking forward to the future, this interpretation focuses on how awful the British Empire was um, when it took control of Jamaica. Now, you can find this through some subtle barbed comments about the British Empire. For example, what a devilment at England. Um, so the tone of this exclamative is arguably quite frustrated, quite, quite cross. And this could be directed at the British Empire for colonising Jamaica. We also have phrases like the motherland or the seat of the empire used very ironically in a way which is quite scathing and critical of the British Empire. For example, the motherland is what Britain was referred to during the British Empire. But actually, Britain did not act like a caring maternal figure to Jamaica. It treated Jamaica awfully. And... Bennett seems to use the phrase seat of the empire with an ironic sense of glee almost. You know, there's, there's an irony there in that people from Jamaica are being asked to go and help rebuild what was the seat of an empire, which isn't anymore. Um, so these barbed comments could be used to interpret the poem as a criticism of historical colonisation. Moving on, a third possible interpretation of this poem is that it's full of optimism for the future. So as people from Jamaica are migrating to England, Bennett conveys a sense of hope and optimism for the future that they might find. The poem says, you know, what an island, what a people. Um, there seems to be some joy, some excitement uh, in the description of people moving from Jamaica to England. And she begins the poem by saying what joyful news this opportunity is. And I also want to talk about the use of patois. I think you can talk about the use of patois in all of the interpretations, but I think it fits particularly nicely here, because as we talked about earlier, patois is a colourful, energetic, often joyful language. And the use of patois here conveys Bennett's, Bennett's joy, possible joy for optimism about what is in the future. Whereas the previous interpretation focused on optimism, there also seems to be a cautious fear 
for the future. Specifically, a fear that England might not be welcoming to the arrival of migrants from Jamaica. And I think we see this best in the sharp change of tone in the final stanza. Me wondering how they're going to stand colonising in reverse. You know, this this ominous, um, worried phrase conveys a fear that the Jamaican migrants might be exposed to discrimination and ill treatment. And sadly, we know that that did happen. We also see this in the dual connotations of the verb settle in settle down for work that we see in the poem. Does this imply that people are merely starting to work, they're settling down to work, or does it imply they're having to accept low quality work or settle for jobs because other opportunities were denied to them? And while the narrator seems to think that Jane um, isn't able to find work because she's too busy reading romantic stories on Aunt Fan's couch, actually, could it be because there was a lack of opportunities for her? So this poem cautiously warns about racial discrimination that may be faced by Jamaican migrants. And while this poem was written long before the Windrush scandal of 2018, in which it was discovered that migrants from the Caribbean were wrongly detained, denied their legal rights, threatened with deportation, and in at least 83 cases were wrongly deported from the UK, it does seem to unknowingly foreshadow um, these quite ominous events. So we've seen four possible interpretations of this poem, that it is a celebration of the end of colonisation, or possibly a criticism of colonisation in the first place. Is this poem filled with optimism for the future, or is it filled with cautious fear for the future? Now, I'm not saying that only one of these is true and the other three are false. You might argue that some are more prominent than others. Um, you might want to focus on one or two over the others. I wonder for you which interpretation you think dominates this poem. When you read the poem, which theme jumps out at you the most? And it might be that one of these themes are something that you'll choose to write about should you choose to write about this poem in an exam. Speaking of exams, let's now go through the poem and pick out some language and structural comments that you might want to talk about were you to write about this poem in an exam. So let's look at the poem now. And as we do so, think about how the quote could be used to support some of those different interpretations I talked about a minute ago. So the poem, as we've said before, is a dramatic monologue. This is one person, possibly Louise Bennett or Miss Lou herself, talking to their friend, Miss Matty. Uh, what a joyful news, Miss Matty, we have at the start. Now, I've listed dramatic monologue under structure. Technically, it's form, but, but I'm just going to put it in here. And you could argue that the dramatic monologue is used to personalise this experience. And I wonder what you think the effect of that is. Personal experience of joy about this new opportunity or a personal criticism of historical colonisation. And is this phrase, what a joyful news, is that used sincerely? Is she sincerely joyful at the opportunities to come? Or actually, is what a joyful news used in a sarcastic tone? You know, is she a bit scathing of the fact that people from Jamaica can move to England? Um, how is that in any way recompense for what happened with historical colonisation? We then move on to I feel like my heart grin burst. I feel like my heart is going to burst. And as of the previous line, is this simile sincere or ironic? Is she is her heart going to burst because it's so joyful and she's happy about the opportunities? Or actually, is she saying this ironically or sarcastically? Is she a bit scathing about the opportunities to come? Is she cautious about what is ahead of many people from Jamaica? And then we come to Jamaica people colonising England in reverse. Now, I've said this a few times in this video, but I think that phrase colonising in reverse is used very ironically. Um, it's a teasing tone. It celebrates the end of historical colonisation by showing how things are very different now, 
how instead of people from Britain moving to Jamaica, people from Jamaica are moving to Britain. And so it's quite an ironic teasing tone. And I think that tone is exaggerated by the rhyme scheme. So I've put this comment about rhyme here, but it does apply throughout the whole poem. We have an ABCB rhyme scheme, which is just a way of saying that the second line and the fourth lines of each stanza rhyme. So, for example, burst and reverse. So rhyme generally does one of two things in poetry, and I actually think both apply here. One thing that rhyme does is it creates a joyful tone, and I think this poem is joyful. Could you argue that the rhyme scheme is used to create a joyful tone because uh, Louise Bennett is celebrating the end of historical colonisation, or she's joyful because she's optimistic about the future? You can tell me. But also, rhyme links words and ideas together. So here we have the words burst and reverse linked together through rhyme. And so we can link the idea of her heart going to burst because of the colonisation in reverse. Um, what's significant about that? Well, she seems arguably very joyful because of this colonisation in reverse. So rhyme links ideas together and you can comment on the effect of that link. Moving on, we have a listing uh, by the hundred, by the thousand, by country load from town, by the shipload, by the plane load. There seems to be enthusiasm for this new future, which is exaggerated by the listing of different numbers of people, different places, different modes of travel by which people will come to England. And then we have this personification. Jamaica is England bound. Is this celebrating the reversal of fortune? Or is this possibly said cautiously, in a cautious tone, with fear for the future? Because it seems like the whole country is coming to England, which is suggested by the personification of Jamaica is England bound. Then I pour out at Jamaica. So people are pouring out of Jamaica, and that's a, a metaphor. People are being poured out, like you might imagine pouring, I don't know, water from a jug into a glass. Um, and that pouring metaphor could suggest enthusiasm, it could suggest joy. And we also have um, the patois, and the patois again is throughout the whole poem, but I just want to talk about it here. It creates a very joyful tone, and so could this metaphor and this use of patois be used to create a joyful tone? Home, which is celebrating the end of colonisation. Everybody's future plan is to get a big time job and settle in the motherland. Now we've talked about the irony of, of this, this idea here of the motherland because on a simple level it just means England, people are settling in, in England, but on a deeper level the motherland was a phrase used to describe England at the, at the height of the British Empire. And yet it's used very ironically because Britain wasn't very mother-like to Jamaica. It wasn't very caring. And so this ironic phrase could be interpreted as a scathing critique of historical colonisation. What an island, what a people. These exclamatives, these short, sharp expressions of joy are exclamatives. If you ever say a, a short phrase um, with powerful emotion, that's an exclamative. For example, stop is an exclamative um, or be quiet is an exclamative. But those are quite negative exclamatives. Whereas here, these are exclamatives of joy. And are these exclamatives of joy used to show a sincere joy of the new opportunities that are available? Or could you also read this sarcastically? Um, is it a barbed criticism? What an island, what a people. Or is it what an island, what a people? You know, a criticism of England for its historical legacy of colonisation. And then we have, you know, man and woman, old and young, just pack them bag and baggage and turn history upside down. So this metaphor of turning history upside down is used to show there's been a dramatic reversal of fortune, which you could argue is a good thing in this poem. But the poem suggests that it's quite easy to reverse fortune. Just pack them bag and baggage and turn history upside down. So the poem implies it's easy to reverse you know, the historical legacy of colonisation. But actually, is it so simple? You know, and there are conversations happening you know, to this day about what England owes other countries that were in the British Empire in the form of reparations to make things right for the things that 
you know, it got wrong through colonization. Moving on, we just have this, this contrast here. Some people don't like travel, but to show their loyalty, they will open up cheap fare to England agency. So even people who don't like to travel will help others get to England. Is this a good thing or not? And then we have people shipping off like fire. And that's a really interesting simile. Um, is it a simile of excitement? You know, fires are, you know, they bring light, they can be joyful, they can they can bring cheer. Um, but also fire can be a symbol of, of danger. So is the simile celebrating the exciting opportunities or is it ominously foreshadowing um, some of the negative consequences, possibly the racial discrimination that some Jamaican migrants will experience through this new migration of people from Jamaica to England. And then we have people coming to the seat of the empire. And as I said earlier, this is very ironic. You know, it's ironic how England used to colonise um, places around the world, including Jamaica, and now England is having to ask the same people that were colonised for help. And um, people are going back to the seat of the empire to help rebuild England, to rebuild Britain. Um, so this is used quite ironically and arguably is quite critical of the historical legacy of colonisation. And now we come to Uno See How Life Is Funny, Uno See De Turnabout. So here we're reminded of one of the key themes of this poem. That according to the poet, there has been a radical reversal of fortune, and Jamaica is apparently colonising England in reverse. So this could be a, a celebration of how things have changed. Yet this cheerful tone conceals a hard truth. It's not as simple as, you know, turning around or turning about. Um, so that could also be seen as a criticism of historical colonisation because its consequences are, are deep and far-reaching. And, you know, is this what's described here a turnabout? You know, the personification of Jamaica uh, taking bread um, kind of seems joyful, actually. Um, it shows new opportunities. But as we've said a few times, this isn't the same as historical colonisation. Jamaicans were invited to England. They aren't stealing bread and resources in the same way the British Empire stole resources from Jamaica historically. So there's an irony in this personification. For when them catch England and start to play them different role, some will settle down to work and some will settle for the doll. So there's a suggestion here that some people may struggle um, to find work. This could be a criticism of how not welcoming England sometimes was to migrants. There's this dual connotation of settling. Is it to settle as in to immigrate, or is it settle as in to make peace with something that isn't good enough? Is this a criticism of how England didn't give good enough opportunities to migrants, so they had to settle for work opportunities because there weren't better opportunities available? And then we have uh, this anecdote about Jane, and she is searching for a job that will suit her dignity. She's looking for a recognition of her identity um, and her, her pride. And there's a sort of celebration here of Jane looking for new opportunities. Let's have a look at this anecdote a bit closer. So here we have Jane, who is on the dole, who is taking unemployment benefits. Um, she's taking two pounds a week while she looks for a job. Uh, but the narrator doesn't think that she's looking very hard because she's spending most of her time on Aunt Fan's couch reading love story books. Now, I think this anecdote has been included by Bennett to very much poke fun and to continue some of the themes of her poem. So one of the themes of this poem is that it celebrates how history has changed. It's an exciting change. Instead of oppressive colonisation, we now have people coming from Jamaica to England to, to live and to work. And Bennett calls this process colonisation in reverse in a joking tone. Because there is no way that the oppressive and brutal colonisation of Jamaica by the British Empire is in any way the same as Jamaicans peaceably coming to England to work. And in this anecdote, Bennett continues this theme and has some fun of it. It's almost like she's saying, hey England, 
You know how you exploited Jamaica for years and years? Well, look how everything's changed. Jamaica's colonising in the verse because Jane is taking two pounds a week from the government. The exploiters have become the exploited. Now, there's no way that Jane taking two pounds a week is the reverse of colonisation. But by including this mocking anecdote, Bennett is showing just how drastically history has changed. And in many ways, it's a celebration of the end of oppressive colonisation and a celebration of the opportunities now available to Jamaican migrants. And as a side note, it's additionally ironic that Bennett uses this example to mock the historical legacy of colonisation, because while Jane might have been on the dole and not looking very hard for work, the vast majority of Jamaican migrants were very quick to start working and paying taxes and didn't rely on unemployment benefits. For instance, just to give you one example, of the 233 men who arrived on the Windrush, the Empire Windrush, on the 22nd of June in 1948, um, well over half of them, 148, had already got jobs less than 10 days later, with 11 more waiting to start placements. And we know just how big a contribution many people from all around the world have made to the NHS and to various industries around the UK. And then at the end of this anecdote, we come to what a devilment at England. So if I was going to write about this in an exam, I'd want to talk about the tone of this exclamative. Is this said in a sort of joking, mocking tone? in the same way that we've seen throughout the whole poem. We know that this poem has been poking fun at the end of colonisation and celebrating how things have changed by almost suggesting, look how England's being colonised in the verse. This is said in a joking, jestful way. And is this exclamative said in the same way? Or actually, is it said in a more sinister way? and frustrated tone. What a devilment. And you could talk about the significance of that word devilment and the connotations of devil. Actually, is this exclamative more cross and more frustrated? Is it a hint that there are problems to come? And we know that there, there were problems. There were problems uh, with explicit racism that many migrants faced when they arrived in the UK. And is this little phrase a, a sentence of frustration at the fact that when people arrived in the UK, they were met with racism and discrimination, which is alluded to in the next lines. They faced war and braved worse, but I'm wondering how they're going to stand colonising in reverse. You know, there's a very dramatic contrast and change of tone here because we've got this recognition that England's gone through a lot. I mean, shortly after this poem was written, or shortly before, I beg your pardon, shortly before this poem was written, England went through the Second World War. It's gone through some difficult things. But how are they going to stand people from Jamaica coming to, to England? Which is an interesting question because you could ask how on earth could those two things be seen as equivalent? The Second World War was absolutely awful. People coming from Jamaica is, you know, it's wonderful. They're coming to, to help and to, to create new lives for themselves. And yet the fact that Bennett equates those two and wondering if Britain will not be able to cope with this, this new migration, is an acknowledgement that there is racism in the UK that's going to make this process problematic. And it makes readers wonder how people will be able to adjust given some of the discrimination that existed and, and in many ways continues to exist in the UK today. So that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. And now we've looked at the poem, I wonder which of those four possible interpretations you think is the most prominent. I hope you found this useful. I will be putting up new videos in the future for some of the other new poetry anthology poems in the conflict cluster. So if you'd like to get those, please do um, subscribe to this channel. And if you have any questions, please do put them in the comments below. Wish you all the very best with your future exams and until next time, cheerio.